All right, everybody, welcome back. This is episode two of the After Hours podcast. Uh, we have a very special guest. Uh, we've been trying to get this man on the line for like weeks now, and we're super excited to have him. So thank you, Val, for coming on. Thanks, man. Finally sober. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Not for dude, long. Dude, Not for long. We're just saying. I mean, it's insane how all of us have talked for, I mean, I've been in MIC for two years. Harry, you too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. been two years. I've never, I mean, I talked about all the time. I talked to Harry all the time, but just until recently, just started actually seeing each other and talking to each other through video. Yeah. It's hilarious. I love it. Yeah. I, I didn't even know you were white, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Like, you, you talk to people online. It's like, you, there's really no anything. You know, that's the beauty yeah. of it, man. It's like, you can be green, purple, whatever the hell you want to be. Yeah, you, know, you can no be one, an alien. So no one has <laughs> And, and it's like the weird thing is like people talk to me a lot of time too. Like when I used to work in sales and they, they, they hear me talk on the phone. Right. And my voice doesn't kind of match like an Asian, Asian yeah, yeah. name. So it's kind of like Bao Nagayan. Like who was this Bayo guy? Yeah. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe how many times they go, I didn't know you're fucking Asian. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Besides my name, obviously, but if, if you just talk to someone on the phone, you know, yeah. like, is that you? <laughs> Yeah, oh dude, I don't know. I think if you hear me talk and you fucking see what I write and stuff, you know I'm this fucking small white dude from Boston. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just, just no yeah, James, you're a dead so, giveaway. I thought, I thought Harry was yeah. some hillbilly dude. Because <laughs> 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 <'Cause it's> a <laughs> Canadian accent, yeah, you, like, you don't uh, know? Like, you have a Canadian accent, like a really deep one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, do you speak French yeah, or anything? Uh, no, <laughs> like, you have to take it in school, but, like, you learn it for like a year and then you just never speak French again because no one speaks French where I live, really. So. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. that's weird, man. Have you like French Canadian. And... Yeah. Keep going, James. Have you ever seen Dexter, the show? Yeah, yeah. No. Dude, I haven't seen it, but Harry I heard about looks, it. Harry looks like the last season of Dexter when he's like on the run. Like he got the big <laughs> Canadian beard. He's like, I love it. Yeah, well, you, you're, 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 your name Harry, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm actually uh, wearing my MIC I after hours the, shirt. Nice. I got the pig shirt on. I got the. This is this is my good luck shirt for trading. This is what it is. Well, cheers, guys. Good seeing yeah. you guys. Yeah. Virtual yeah. Talk. for sure. So Harry, I think you should not drink because I remember when you went on that drinking yeah. bin. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, I'm on sparkling water at the moment. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I think I have a drinking problem. <laughs> and then you're like, holy shit, uh, maybe we need to ban Harry from MIT for a little bit. He'll have to rehab. <laughs> Harry, would, Harry would FaceTime or text me at like 4 a.m. flash, and I'm like, dude, we, we got to stop. We're gonna, we got to train in like three hours. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I was in university, and like I remember being in MIC, and like it was like a Friday, and like everyone's like, oh, yeah, nail and bail Friday. And I remember that I just had too much tequila the night before. And I remember like it was a big low float runner, things moving. And I'm trading, and I'm like, oh, shit, I got to puke. Like, you know when you're saying <laughs> two level twos? two tapes and it's like one screen and you're like oh my god no and so i go to you i come back <laughs> and it's like you know kind of starting to grind up i like go long on it go puke again <laughs> put a stop in it's like starting to squeeze i just took it off and went to bed yeah that sounds like me dude did you make money that's the most important yeah, thing yeah i did <laughs> it's, a, it's not it shouldn't be a repeatable process but like you know well, at least not trading like that. But Dude, tequila is one of those alcohols that there's a fine line between like you can have just enough tequila to have a good night, and you take one step over, and you're drunk for three days. It'll yeah. ruin your dude. life. That's what. That's like that's like trading, dude. You know, you fucking step in your toe and then <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're done. You're done. <laughs> Same thing no, with trading. Over I, drinking, over trading. I think it'd be good. I think it'd be good to remind everyone too, like this podcast, like we obviously are here, like we're all traders and we like talking about trading, but like Harry and I wanted to start this to kind of talk about everyone's lives and like emotional, like kind of journeys through trading and stuff. And, yeah. you know, I mean, Alex last time was great. And we assumed same thing with Val, like there's no one better to talk about the emotional journey. Cause yeah, that's the way, like, man. That's yeah. why I'm going to, I'm going to drink alcohol, do drugs, what we need to do to be, for me to open up. <laughs> 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 So we gotta do a disclaimer. Everything yeah, here is right. fictional. 
Everything we say is fictional. Do not yeah. believe what the fuck we're saying. And this is not really alcohol. If you listen to this podcast, what? you have to sign an NDA. You cannot talk about <laughs> yeah. it. You can't do anything. Like, yeah. no, uh, if you see me do anything illegal, it's not really what I'm doing. <laughs> this is not really Val either. This is someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we hired an actor. <laughs> so, guys, the disclaimer, this is all fictional for fun. Edu- yeah. this, is, this is not even educational, okay? It's just made of bullshit, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> this is just for entertainment purposes only. Yeah. It's not real. Like, all right. like cocaine under Harry's nose is not real. <laughs> yeah, let me just rub it off. Yeah. Good, thing, yeah. hey, good thing you're wet, though. Does it show? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it actually doesn't. It actually doesn't. So Unless I get a little in my beard or something, you know? <laughs> This is a shit show already. We're like, what, five minutes in? This is All right, our bad. first actual question for Val, <laughs> I guess as we wanted to get started, was like, what was your life like before trading? Like, before you discovered trading, Ooh. like, you know. So, so before I actually, like, like any sort of trading. Yeah, even nothing. Even yeah. bullshit. Yep. Like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No buying okay. the breakout trading, no nothing. No, you know, yeah, nothing because my, my first trading experience was when, geez, man, this is Silicon Valley. I, I can't remember how old I was. Right out of college, man, like 23 years old or some shit like that. And everyone was trading stocks with dot com. I'm fucking old, man, but the good yeah, filter, yeah. yeah. I'm fucking That's old. When I was so. born. <laughs> Dude, this is before you were born, bro. <laughs> I think my fucking first trade was before you were born, but uh, Jesus. But remember, this, dude, this is how long ago I was training. It was still in fractions. Yeah. No bull- crazy. So it was like, dude, can you imagine a stock trading two dollars and one fourth <laughs> by <laughs> trade off one fourteen? Oh my god! Dude, like what the fuck, right? And so you had to be really good at math. But after, dude. People had calculators, dude. They had trading calculators. Because what the fuck is 132? One over 32, right? Yeah. And so, and so, those are, so that, that was what the days of the first online trading was. So I was there during the first online trading. That's how they started commercials and all that stuff. And that's how I started trading, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, this is before fucking Ameritrade, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, so, so before that, trading? what's that? Like, how did you even get, like, what were you doing, like, bef- right before you figured out? Correct. Trade? That's why I want to paint the picture, the picture because the, the yeah. kids today, they, they have the internet. I barely have the internet. <laughs> we, just, yeah. we just invented fire, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we just invented yeah. yeah. electricity. <laughs> so the but it was right out of college, man. And so, so this is the thing, man. When I went to college, I, I, I studied engineering because I, I like math yeah. and all that. And so I just took out a fucking... I went to the library. Remember that shit? I don't know if yeah, you remember yeah. what library is. <laughs> it was actually back then. Yeah, well, yeah. I've been to one. And, and there was no internet, by the way. There was like no Google and, and shit like that. So we, so when we copied our fucking notes and wrote essays and copy, we actually had to get an encyclopedia and write that shit down. Yeah. We could copy and paste. Okay, so um, that's just how ancient it was. So, so I took out a like a magazine. I go, what, what is the who made the most money? And it was always engineering. Which made the most money with the least amount of education, right? Yeah. And so engineering was like, okay, I gotta go to school for only four years and what, I can make fucking 60 Gs a year? Holy fuck, yeah. <laughs> right? 60 Gs, right? Yeah. And so, my, so when I graduated, my whole goal was just to make $100,000 by the time I was 30 years old, bro. Yeah. So I graduated when I was like 22, 21, 22. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck man. I'm gonna be fucking rich. My goal is to be an engineer, and by the time I hit 30 years old, I'm gonna make a hundred grand a year. Yeah. So that was my path. I was I was a good fucking worker. I had my first job out of school was thirty six thousand dollars a year, bro. Yeah. Imagine that. That comes out to eighteen dollars an hour. Yeah. That is I couldn't even feed myself nowadays. So they, I eat more than that per hour on DoorDash. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Each DoorDash is more than yeah. eighteen bucks, and I order every hour, but uh. So my days before is just fucking working in a cubicle, bro. And but but the thing with that is it's great. And you know why I'll tell you it's great. People hate working on a cubicle. This this is bullshit, man. These guys are these are fucking guys that never actually probably never worked in a good work environment. Because I went to school, so I had decent jobs. It wasn't like blue collar or anything. And so I loved it. I loved it because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I was surrounded by people. 
And it was a steady paycheck every fucking week. I, if I if I jerked off, I didn't do anything that week. I still get paid. Yeah. If I got fucking drunk and I call in sick, I still got paid. Yeah. Okay. So those are the things that when people go, oh, you should be on boss and all that. I was like, it's fucking fine until you don't make any money trading. Yeah, exactly. So go. Yeah, for, so so that life. When I look back at that life, sure, I did. I was not making much money, but I was a poor guy. Yeah. I was. Well, you know. So I, what. I was fucking making thirty six thousand. Then my next job was forty eight thousand. Then seventy thousand. And then ninety thousand. And then a hundred thousand. Then almost two hundred thousand. Yep. Then I think my biggest year was like two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. And so I, I went from thirty six thousand to two hundred fifty. And remember, this is like over a decade ago. Yeah. So with inflation, yeah. it was fucking a shitload of money, right? Yeah, that was. Yeah. Yeah. So now, did you enjoy your job? Like, did you like? Did you enjoy I, engineering? In the beginning, I loved what I did because it was sociable, all that shit. But the problem I have with that is eventually you outgrow everything. Because what happens is this. If you're a socialist, you would love that shit because fuck, yeah. man, I don't have to do any work. Someone else cared me, right? Yeah. I was so fucking good at my job. So fucking good. And that's how I rose so fast financially, right? They, they gave me raises and I quit and then everybody wanted me, right? But the problem was like, fuck, man, I did all the work and my boss made all the money. So when you look at a guy like me making 100 grand, 200 grand a year for a corporation, which is a shitload of money, but these yeah. bosses were getting fucking rich. They're making millions, stock options and shit like that, right? And so that's what fucking led me to like, fuck this shit. And so the greed, the human greed, like I think I'm better than you. You don't need to try and find something else. So, but when I look back, I'm telling you, man, those were the best days of my life, really, guys. Uh, not financially. It's just in terms of if I wasn't that fucking greedy and if I didn't see the dot-com boom and I see everybody getting rich, getting rich except me, I'd be fucking happy. Mm-hmm. And so my advice to these kids today is like, fuck, man. It's, I call it opportunity cost. People, yeah. if your opportunity cost is zero because you have no job, you're zero, motherfucker. <laughs> you're having a job at McDonald's is better than staying home doing yeah. nothing, right? And so my opportunity cost was 250 grand a year. Make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. so in order for me to be satisfied, I had to make 250 grand more in day trading or whatever. Yeah. But, or you, you reach a point where you make enough money and you put it away, then you can say, fuck this shit. I don't need the money anymore, right? I wasn't yeah. rich by any means, but I, I mean, back then I was making six figures as, as guaranteed. And so I was enough to buy a nice house. The houses were really cheap back then, right? They're still like 800 grand or whatever the fuck it was, right? Yep. So my first house I bought was 70000 for a two-bedroom condo. Yeah. 70000 Okay? This Crazy. was in San Jose. Sold it six months later for 250000 <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> oh, a trade. Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. and, then, so, and then after that, I bought an $800,000 house. You know what I'm saying? So all from fucking a thirty thousand dollars down payment. That's insane. I mean, thirty thousand dollars was so much cheaper. It was so different. You know, like me but, trying but, to get but, my first house. But now, I was making so- yeah, like fifty grand a year. So you <laughs> know, so <laughs> so yeah. no one was making these right? money. No one's fucking making millions of like nowadays, right? Yeah. So so it sounds like like life was pretty good. Like at least from the stance of you were making good money. You were young. You had a steady job, so like, how did you even get into trading, and what led oh, you? Oh, this to- is the thing that's fucked up in life, guys. I, I call it ignorance is bliss. Remember when you were a kid? I was a poor kid. I never knew I was poor until <laughs> someone told me you're fucking poor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't know I was short and ugly and Asian. Just someone said, "Hey, you're not white. You're just." <laughs> right? It's like I was so fucking happy being who the fuck I was, yeah. and so I was when we start to. It, arrogance. So there's a good and bad arrogance, right? So for me, it turned out well, but it could have turned out very ugly. That's, it's like, fuck. And I started to think I'm better than other people, that people are making more money than me because I was stuck in a corporate job. And yeah. so that's, that's when it kind of like gets kind of dangerous. If, if you have a bullshit self-esteem, like, you know, like, I mean, I wasn't the best whatever, but I knew I was not the worst, right? So, yeah. But, yeah. The way I talk, I joke around, but I always back it up. I'm not the kind of guy that will bullshit you, but have nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. I make something of myself first, and then I said, you know, that, that, that's how it is, right? So, so when I look back, man, it's a good and bad because, you know what, man? I could have wrote out that corporate job and probably still be very well. 
and probably be yeah. happier in terms of, I'll tell you, man, I'm, I went through a miserable stage where you, you imagine being, every human is a sociable individual. I'm an introvert, really, because I, you know, I'm an engineering introvert, but at the same time, I still need to see people and shit. Imagine now, for two decades, not seeing a single soul, just working by yourself, being stressed the fuck out, losing money sucks, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. I don't care how much you lose, it still fucking sucks. Yeah, it um, does. Yeah. Not having a steady paycheck, uh, having to go buy your own health insurance, not, not being provided for, not, it's like, I can't take a vacation because I have no income. You know, if you're a day trader, you can't take no vacation. Um, whereas if you have a job, I can take a vacation that fucking pay for me. <laughs> Yeah. But it's, just a, it's just a human, the human interaction is what I miss the most. And for most, they will crack. Most people will fucking crack. Like right now during the quarantine, yeah. I see so many friends and so many people like, fuck, man, I can't go outside. I can't socialize. I can't travel. I can do this shit. They're fucking breaking. And I'm like, motherfuckers, only been three months. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing this shit for fucking 20 years. For 20 years. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so people go, oh, how is the quarantine treating you? What quarantine? The same shit I've been fucking doing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I felt the same way. My family and relatives would come over. Oh, my God, my life has changed. Like, how's your life changed? I'm like, uh, not really anything happened. Like, you realize how isolated you actually are? When stuff like this goes down and you're like, oh, I didn't really, you know, feel like I, I would have stepped out of the house normally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I forgot your question. So when you your question. <laughs> well, no, it was just, you know, like introduction, you know, starting yeah. out. The thing that I was most so, curious about, this was a question that I've always had is like, okay, so, you know, we've heard like from like previous, you know, whatever, like, so basically like, um, I don't know how it went where you like remortgaged your house or something and said, like, oh. basically, this is my last shot. Like, like for you to do something like that, like, like back in like the OTC penny stocks, cause this was what I was always like kind of wondering and like confused about, like, like how, how did you get so good? Like, you know, got- like how, how did that like kind of learning process start? Like, is it similar to now with like kind of NASDAQ where like, you know, it's kind I'm, of like- I'm saying it's, it's, it's different technically, but it's the same process wise. I'll okay, tell you why. Yeah. Because what we're trading now is all scams. Yeah. Small caps, a bunch of fucking scams. The only reason they're yeah. running these stocks up is these are bullshit companies that need financing, right? Their ultimate end game is the fucking same. Exactly. Same thing with penny stocks. They run it up to do financing to sell shares. There's two, there's a couple ways to do financing. The, the small cap is the bank, the investment banking more legit way, but still not legit. Come on, man. Yeah. These fucking stocks go from a dollar and ten dollars and then they get an offering, right? Yeah, exactly. Fucking bullshit. How the fuck is that legal, right? Who knows? Everybody, if you're an insider, you're showing that shit. They're telling their friends to do all that shit. Okay? So let me tell you how. Should I fucking do this? This is fake, right? Yeah. I mean, this is how uh, this, is, this is how investment banking works, guys. I hope no, I hope nobody's gonna fucking call me, but <laughs> but if you if you have an account, if you're a big trader, you have an account at fuck, my I even say this shit? But um, <laughs> if you have a big account, and let's say I'm making this up, this is all fictional. This isn't real. Right. Some, some big bank, let's say Goldman Sachs. I'm just making it up. It's not Goldman Sachs, right? <laughs> it could be some boiler room shit, right? Jesus. Where'd no, James no. go? Did he go throw up? No, I, I, I don't know where he went. I think he has to use the washroom or something. Anyway, keep continuing. I, I want James to hear this. This is okay, fucking okay. mind blowing, bro. I just need a beer for this. this is- oh, okay. oh, this is good. This is good. Viewers, <laughs> right. you're into a fucking treat. I told you. Man, I, I might go on the next segment and tell you more shit. This is fucking crazy. <laughs> This is a fuck, man. I'm gonna get fucking killed. But I'm gonna make it up, right? Don't go and tag some other firm. So, so basically, whatever the big firms are, if you have a lot of money with them, you know how they do. do you know how they shop for offerings? You know how they come up with the price? They they have a guy calling the the their big clients and they say, "Hey, man, we have this stock. It's at ten dollars right now. Uh, we're willing to sell it to you for three dollars a share." Wink, wink. <laughs> Do you want to be part of this? You're an accredited investor. Would you like to be part of this public offering? What the fuck? I know that offering's coming. 
Yeah. Does that make fucking sense? How do you think they're packaging and selling it? Where the fuck are they selling fifteen million dollars at three dollars when it's just yep. trading at ten dollars? Exactly, all scams. You, you say who the fuck do you think they're selling it to? So how oh. rich do you have to be to get that phone call? Like, who do you have to be to get calls like that? Who like, do you have to blow? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll get on a plane. I'll do that. I was never involved in it, by the way. These are just <laughs> shit I read on the internet, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not real. I well, mean, you think about it. That's all legal. What is not legal about being an accredited investor? Your fucking prime broker calls you and yeah. says... Yo, man, I, you want to be part of this public offering. What, what do you think they're selling this public offering to, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're all fine. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. And then what I do is like, oh, shit, let me try to locate some shit. <laughs> and so, so I, can short, I can short the shit at 10 bucks, cover it back up as the offering. Yeah. Three fucking money. Dude. So these are all scams and stuff, but we're like, we're OTCs, the same shit. Was it? So, was it so I'm going to tell you something. These are not, this is not a scam. That's how fucking... Investment banking works, bro. Yeah. Okay? And so that's what the fucked up part. So so I don't fuck with Tesla and shit like that because I don't know the end game. That's way yeah. above my pay grade. Yeah, exactly. Right? My pay grade. So so I fucking of all these things, okay, every everything you invest in the world, if it's an efficient market, it's everything's priced where they need to be priced. You oh shit, what's it say? Meeting has been upgraded by host. Okay, if the markets were totally efficient, whatever the fuck you, you want to call it, yeah. completely priced right by P.E. ratios and shit, there's nothing to trade. What the fuck, right? The stock would be fucking flat. If it's worth $10, it's worth $10 fucking dollars, right? Yeah. And so you have all these Twitter motherfuckers. They're all fucking broke losers, by the way. Yeah. I'm not going to name names, but all the guys on Twitter, I think they're fucking hot shit, right? Most of those guys are broke-ass fuckers. I think oh, that... Probably. Anybody that complains about the Fed all the time, oh, shut the fuck, you can't fucking have a, you don't have a fucking one comma to your name in your bank account, and you're, you're preaching about what the Fed could do, right? And, and shut the fuck up, motherfucker. If you are so smart, and it's a rigged game, shouldn't you be rich? And you know the rigged game in that mess? Yeah, exactly. It's like, motherfucker, you don't know, so shut the fuck up. If you own the stock market only goes up because the Fed is printing money, why are you shorty shit going on everything? <laughs> Does it make sense? So, so when I realized that the market is full of bullshit, that every fucking industry has their insider shit. I'm not part of it, obviously, but I understand the game. I'm not arrogant to think that I know everything, right? Yeah. Like I always said, man, I'd rather be rich than right. Exactly. I'd rather be fucking rich than right. I shut my fucking mouth. I really don't know what the fuck's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. But I know the end game of the stock. The stock is going to fucking crater. It's the timing that's important. Every motherfucker knows. So you see smart motherfuckers bashing stock. Why are you buying this pig? This is a piece of shit. Tell me that's worth nothing. No shit, motherfucker. Shut the fuck up and fucking wait for that shit to go up. Make your choice. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Why are you being a... Everybody that tweets it and bashes it, they're stuck short. They yeah, mistimed they it. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you, back then, I was a huge long. I was not a short. I started my career as a long bias trader, squeezing the fuck out of some very famous motherfuckers or it's on Twitter right now that used to trade OTC. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> they, they know all the filings. I don't even know what SEC stands for filing. What the fuck are filing, right? Edgar, uh, that Edgar is like a fucking my neighbor that mows the lawn or some shit, right? <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck is Edgar for? So back then, I was a very unsophisticated day trader. I did not use fundamental analysis at all. Yeah. My fundamental analysis was, oh, fuck, how much money I have in my account? Uh, how much can I move this stock? <laughs> Right? And I had a three-day rule that I fucking created. It worked beautiful, and it's yeah. still working today, the three-day rule. Yeah. So my whole thing was I knew their end game. Yeah. I knew it was a piece of shit company. But, and I did not look at their filings. I didn't give a fuck to have one employee and another fucking admin into their yeah. name, right? And I do because if you watch the movie Boiler, Boiler yeah. Room, yeah. guys – out there, watch that fucking movie. That movie's fucking true. I've seen it, yeah. Okay, and when I, that movie came out, I did exactly that. I knew what they were doing. Yeah. They have a bunch of fucking shares that need to fucking sell. The only way they do is they market the fuck out of it. They, they run it up so they get dumped. That's how they do their financing. Yeah. 
Okay, they are like 10 cent companies, 50 cent companies, n- n- fucking Goldman Sachs are gonna give them an offering. Yeah. So what they do is they sell uh, convertibles, all that shit. It, like, okay, uh, uh, loan me $100,000. I'll give you a million shares in my company. Yeah. And, and so, okay, so I got a million shares of this shit. Yeah. Who the fuck is gonna buy it off me? Mm, I am going to create an email campaign or a factor or whatever yeah. it may be, right? Yeah. And so I'm gonna get some fucking body to run it up and then there we go, I steal my shirt. Yeah. Okay, so people think it's corrupt. The whole fucking system is corrupt, bro. It always has been. So, yeah. so the moment I discovered that, that's when I was like, okay, man, what can I do next? Small cap is the same fucking shit. We know the end game. The problem is the timing. It is, yes. If we, if, we, if, if you're a short seller, you just need to fucking wait until yeah. they're done with what they're doing. Yeah, until it's and, just the backside. Because I'm yep. along personally, and I, I, I love shorting as well. Because like you'll see me in chat all the time where I'm like, all right, not going long anymore. I know it's you know, I know that it just like stuffed into seven, or I know that you yeah. know this is holding. But like, I enjoy on the front side longing on the way up, and that's just kind of my style. As like, that's I the way to, longing is the best way to do it. The problem for me is, man, it's so difficult because when, the problem is when we wake up, this shit's already up so much, bro. And I'm in, I'm in Canada, right? I'm awake in the morning when yeah. these stocks first start gapping up in pre-market. So I was, thing. Yeah, I was able to take advantage <clears throat> of, of kind of that type of style. I chose, I chose the penny stock on purpose when I started. It's because it was a fair playing field. It opened exactly at 930 there's yeah. no pre-market, no after-hour bullshit. The market turned off, it turned off. Nowadays, you got the algos working until 8 p.m. at fucking night and waking yeah. up at 3 in the morning. Yeah. And, you, and there's dumb fucking guys out there that don't know what the fuck they're saying. They say, oh, I want to trade 24-7. Fucking idiots. Yeah. They're going to sneak in bad news when you're fucking sleeping. You cannot compete with an algo that never sleeps. No. Okay? The... You have to have the same playing rules as everybody else to, in order for you to compete with them. And the penny stock was very fair because it started at 9.30. Did not start at 7 a.m. So news so, came out, everybody has to buy it. It doesn't just magically, you know, get all this shit, right? So, so, so every system has deficiencies, inefficiencies, deficiencies, whatever, loopholes. Okay, a loophole. If you cannot figure out what the deficiency is, you have no edge. Exactly. Makes sense. So, so these. So Val, how, did, how did you even like? How did you even like? Like, did you have anyone to influence you in trading when you started, or was it? When like- I moved to New York, there was one guy that ran a chat room. His name is Thought Gappers. That we we used to be friends back then. Uh, so he, he kind of showed me a little bit of a penny stock game, and he did the gapping thing. But then I took that to a different level. Right? <laughs> so I just kind of like blew yeah. that off the charts. So I, I did have a guy that showed me. And, um, but I did, everybody does their own thing. So I, 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 then I started to short too, you know. So yeah. I made so much money because I, I was able to time it perfectly. Yeah. It wrote it three days up. And usually by the third day, it's a fucking tank. So trading was actually much easier before because th- there was less algos. In penny stocks, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not as many algos like there are now. Yeah. Because the liquidity is not there. I chose, a, I chose to be a big fish in a small pond. Rather than be a small fish in a fucking ginormous pond, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm like, back then, you think it was much easier back, that back then? I mean, like you were making all this, like a bunch of money, and you just felt it was so much easier than even now? I feel it's easier is because of the lack of the robotic trading. Yeah. Yeah. It's very difficult when you compete with a robot that has an infinite buying power. Yeah. 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 They, they, yeah. They have an algo that just like, they could probably turn it on and just, it'll hit, you know, every single. The, the thing is they don't, they don't have any loss parameters. They'll just buy the whole fucking shit up. Exactly. Yeah. And whereas so, we're, yeah. So like Go ahead. at this point you were like you're what? You're in OTCs, you're like in your early twenties, right? 
I was late twenties. Yeah. Late twenties. Were did you? I mean, did your family care that you were trading? Like, did they? Like, well, did they yeah, I was losing so much money. I asked them for fucking more money. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's what I was like. That, that, so I mean, fuck, man. I, I, that's when I mortgage. Oh yeah, comes back to the question. Yeah, that's when I mortgage my house. I was like, fuck, man. I, I would be so consistent all the time, but the problem I had was greed. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'll tell you a story. Like I was. It was before Pattern Day Trader too, like right before Pattern Day Trader. <clears throat> and so I, I, I had $25,000 or $20,000 in the account. And then it was 60 Gs, bro, in by one hour. Yeah. Like this, this is a shit little fucking money for a little kid back then, right? I mean, what yeah. the fuck? I just made fucking like, like a BMW back then, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is like 15 years ago, right? And then I was like, fuck, there's no fucking way it could go back down. <laughs> no fucking way. And not even- You thought I'd go to 100. <laughs> Dude, it's like this thing tripled within an hour. And all I could think was this. Dude, this is a classic. So all you viewers listen carefully because this is you. Okay. All I could think about was not, I should be very happy that I tripled or doubled my money within an hour, fucking right? Geez, yeah. I was not happy. I was pissed that I didn't go all in. Yeah. I'm like, please fucking tank. Please fucking tank so I can add more. Jeez. And so what happened is, when it starts going down, oh yeah, baby, I would be rude. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have a massive cushion. Holy fuck. Can I call my banker to fucking add more money? <laughs> and so I, I went max, ball, deep, leverage, you name it. And just on the backside, too. I didn't know anything about that shit back then. I just knew I was up fucking 200%. How the fuck can I lose? Yeah. Oh my God. When it started dropping down, oh, okay, I'll add more. Oh, yeah, I got my ass. Oh fuck, I thought more. Oh shit, okay, a little more. Oh fuck, I'm even now. It can't go down anymore. Oh fuck, I'm now red. Yeah. <laughs> so I went from up like 30 G's, bro, on a $20,000 account to having, I think, five or 8,000 left in my account at the end of the day. Jesus. So I went from 20,000 to 60,000 and closed at five to 8,000. And I, I was in a ball, bro. This is, this, this is like, I think this was, this was power nature. I think I was over power. I was like 30 or something, but, but the point is I doubled or tripled my fucking account within an hour. And all I could think about was, God damn it. I suck. Why did I go all in? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then yeah. I fucking shit. And I'm, I'm curled up in the ball, literally, bro. It was just the, the ugliest fucking feeling in the world. That was, that was when I was like, I would be very consistent until shit like that happens. Right. It's always like one fucked up, stupid fucking shit. Yeah. And so then I was like, fuck this shit, dude. I, I, I'm not going to ever. So, so I went from fucking holding too long to holding too short. <laughs> too quick, right? So, so I was like, fuck. So, in my, so I have PTSD. My PTSD was always to that story where, man, I was on so fucking much money all the time. And then I, I did not sell. Yeah. And so I started to say, fuck this shit. I'm going to start scalping. Because my whole philosophy is I, it's, I can figure out what's going to happen within a couple of minutes easier than a, than a couple of hours or a couple of days, right? Exactly. And so I, 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 during the intraday, I would not hold long. I would hold overnight because I had a system of gapping that shit goes up, right? So there, it was much, uh, you know, but the problem with that thing now is the markets open up fucking like 2, 3 a.m. Gapping does not work. No. Gapping works when it opens at one set time and there's, Pent up demand for that stock. Yeah. No. So when a stock goes up and it's strong at the close, right? Grandma's at home, your fat father, your kids, whatever the fuck, your friends come over to read the press release and they're like, holy fuck, I want to get into stock. Bye, 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 bye. But yeah. with a NASDAQ, that's why Robin Hood, 8 a.m., boom, that is a true gap. You see what happens? Yeah. But they're smart at Robin Hood. They sold the flow to the fucking hedge funds. The hedge funds. Motherfucker, I have a million shares of Robin Hood motherfuckers buying at market. So that's why you see that shit get shorted, whatever. Yeah. And they cover up with the Robin Hood. Yeah, and I, I saw it one time at 9 a.m. So I remember watching the stock because, like, maybe like a month ago, it would be okay to buy it like 9 50 or whatever and kind of see what happened. And if it doesn't work out, you know, you just sell it or whatever. You know, it'd work on kind of the low folks. But what I would see was that there'd be all this volume coming through and you'd have like, you know, NASDAQ or, you know, someone showing a hundred shares and just have all the Robin Hood volume going. It just, it doesn't move. no, it'd just <laughs> be absorbing it. I'm like, what the yeah. hell is going on? Yeah. 
Yep. So now they you see, right? Out now. So I mean, they, they, they're doing what I was doing. Yeah. They 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 got they they got a fucking well hedge, man. Yeah. Oh, that that was, was so slow. When, when, so Val, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Gonna, so go ahead, Harry. Go okay. go. Oh no, I was gonna say like that was like a little inefficiency, but then now. You know, it doesn't work. They call anymore. that. They, they call it. You know, it still goes on today. It's called an imbalance. Yeah. And you can you can see these imbalances. A DOS trader. Fuck man, I don't know what, how they did it. Fucking genius, right? So when a stock levels up, level down. Uh, on DOS, you actually see it says IMB. Here's a little yeah. trick, guy. A little free trick. IMB yeah. stands for imbalance, and it shows you the the implied opening price. Yeah. It never did that before. I never. No one could ever see that shit before. You have to have some special tools to see the imbalance. So the, the time that it takes them so long to do, some of these holes are like 10 minutes, someone like half an hour, because they're trying to figure out what the opening imbalance price is. Because it's halted. Because when they open up, the algos are really, really, really yeah. So you have all these phones, all these algos competing for the fucking flow. Yep. And so you see them gap, I'm like, holy fuck. So now, if I'm stuck in on the halted intraday level up, level down, and I'm in there, Dog, you can see that price and you can snap it right there when it opens up. You put your fucking price a little bit near there, you'll get that fucking price, even if it's 30 cents, 50 cents away. Dude, everyone needs to pay us for that secret. Everyone needs to Venmo <laughs> Val right now, $20 for that secret. Join him, I see. I love, like, I love, I love what we're talking about and, like, I love all of this. And I, I kind of wanted to bring it back to, like, how when you said that at this point you started scalping, but did you tell your, I, I'm just curious. I, I don't want to like lose this question in my head. Did you tell your family like how much you lost or like had made or did your family have no idea? Was it totally? They, they really, they were clueless at all. And since when I was losing money, I didn't want people to know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> until, until I'm like, fuck mom, I got to remortgage my house. <laughs> you have money. Did she know why you were doing it? Did she know you were remortgaging to trade? Yeah. Jesus. Dude, but, but, the thing, but the thing is, I, 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 my job paid a lot of money. So, yeah. so taking that 50 grand, the worst case was, okay, I work a year, you know, save every yeah. fucking penny and pay her back, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, that, that, so that's the thing, guys. The, trading is much easier if you have money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <nice. laughs> because <laughs> every, life is easier if you have money, right? But yeah. that, that's not the point. The point is like, if you're always worried about how to pay your bills and shit, dude, your trading is going to be affected. That's why I always tell people, man. I, I tell people straight up, man, trading is not the fucking, the vaccine for your fucking poverty. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. You, you, but it is the ticket to your freedom. But in order to buy the ticket, you, you can't be fucking homeless. Yeah. Take care of your personal really affairs first. Is that <laughs> It's not Willy Wonka's factory. You don't just go buy a chocolate bar and make a you know, get the golden ticket and become rich. Yeah, that's an old ass movie. I'm trying to remember what I all remember is Oompa Loompa, bro. <laughs> it's, like a, <laughs> it's like a fucking weed movie, people a stoner movie, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I'm usually fucking high by the time the Oompa Loompas come out. <laughs> Taking out the old fucking Willy Wonka. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, so you didn't have baby. any like haters or anything like back then i didn't have any what any Bills? like haters really back then did you Other Dude, than, like, no one knew who the fuck i was yeah. i was like there was hardly any social media i created a twitter account you saw like i started just tweeting some fucking shit in the beginning and i got like five likes you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. literally no i was making a million dollars a fucking year right back then trade that shit and uh I, I, you know, man, so one, one time I decided to, cause I started getting more people, like I want to help people. Man, I helped so many people start chat rooms, man. It had countless of people fucking started chat rooms. I was yeah. the original chat room guy, right? I did it for free and I helped so many people make tens of millions of dollars paying to do this shit. But it was, my, my whole thing was never, I mean, I, I mean, I'm a simple dude, right? I, I mean, fuck, I don't need much shit. So, so I, I, I never wanted to be known. I was back then, you know, like, fuck, man. It, I didn't want my girlfriends and who, my spouse, who were the fuck, my friends didn't know how much money I made anyways, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was, like, fucking trying to fucking live this humble fucking life. It's like, fuck. And to be honest, I didn't wire any money out. Yeah. Just fucking growing that account, right? Was, I was trading yeah. for like $4 million, right? Yeah. And that's because back then there was no leverage on OTC. Um, 
So I had so so basically whatever you fucking trade is all cash. So there was no fucking margins and shit, right? Um, yeah. On shit that's under like a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever, two fifty, two fifty. Yeah. Uh, everything was margin, uh, margin, margin at two dollars and fifty cents a share, even if it's ten fucking cents. Yeah. Hey, what happened, to James? What is that? So He's just flashing back I'm still and forth. here. I'm still here. My my girlfriend's whining at me, so I just wanted to answer that. Oh, I was like, what the yeah, fuck? I'm still, you, I'm showed, here. you just showed your crotch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, this show is giving you a hard on? <laughs> I was like, is this porn cat or podcast? No, it's, just, it's just like a default picture that you pick on Zoom for your, for your, your screen. Your thing. default picture is your crotch? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no whoa. To my leg, all right? <laughs> I forgot the question now, bro. <laughs> this is why we can't drink and do this. Or you just keep forgetting. No, I think we were talking like... about like haters or something. Oh, dude, no one, no one knew who, who the fuck yeah, I was. Yeah. And then so the, I knew that once I became public, you know, like fucking, I didn't expect as much level of trolling, to be honest. I, I really thought like, oh, people, oh, I want to learn how you do it. So my whole thing was when I became public, it was not for me to brag. Like, who the fuck cares? If I wanted to brag, I would fucking brag. Right? Yeah. But I was—I was, I mean, I was making money well before anybody knew who I was. Um, so when I came out, I truly wanted to help people because I was so fucking stuck in this hermit life, you know, yeah. living in my fucking uh, room all day. So, and so my so the sad thing about social media is like I, I thought people would would embrace it. To be yeah. honest, eighty percent did embrace it. They're like, oh my gosh, show me how you did it. And I've taught many millionaires in my yeah. day, okay, for free. So I did help a lot of people. But then that's 10, 20% of the segment that was just true haters. Yeah. But I didn't expect the level of how nasty the trolling would be. They would yeah. find out where I live. Yeah. They, uh, one, one guy fucking came into my New York house and vandalized my fucking house. Holy and then I call, so I'll tell you the story in New York City, right? So I had a free chat room and a competing chat room or something. I was like, fucking like, they're fucking, that, it's just, dude. The guy found out where I fucking live. I came fucking home. It was New York City. I lived in on Fifth Street, uh, Fifth, uh, on Fifth, Fifth Avenue. Wait, what happened? It, yeah, it was, a, it was a nice area, right? So I came home and there was, in my door, vandalized, like tomatoes all over the fucking, and then my fucking super, my superintendent was like, what the fuck, Bow? You better fucking clean it. He charged, he charged me a shitload of money to clean it up, right? And I was like, holy fuck, I knew who exactly did it. So I called the police. This is, so this was like over a decade ago, bro. Yeah. This is maybe 15 years ago, right? 12, 15 years ago. Uh, people didn't know anything about online shit. I called the cops and the cops started laughing at me. They go, what are you talking about? Chat room? What? You, you fucking AOL? What the fuck? MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> right? This is like and they're like call me kid, right? Because I was a young kid, right? Yeah. I was like early thirties and shit, twenty eight, whatever. How old I was? I forgot. I forgot, man. Thirty two, whatever. And they're like, you and your kid. Like, what the? Why you call me over here to fucking like this? So this guy threw uh, what? Explain to me what? This guy didn't like you online, so he threw tomatoes at your house. Yeah. <laughs> you see, it's kind of fucking funny when you think about it, right? Yeah, yeah. And so then. <laughs> And so I'm like, uh, I don't really know how to explain it to you, but yeah, that guy didn't, like, didn't like me online. Yeah. <laughs> and the cop's like, like and uh, did he kill you? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, no one took uh, seriously. Imagine that like, we were fighting right now. Now social media is more accepted and that people know what the yeah. fuck it is. But back then, like, what the fuck is a troll? What the fuck are you talking about, right? Yeah. And, so, and, and, and so that was when I went dark. I shut down my free chat room. I was like, this is not fucking worth it. I'm doing this shit for fucking free. Yeah. And it got to the where people were physically trying to find out where I live to hurt me. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, because, you know, like, they always blame you for fucking their stock up. Because let's say if I short or the stock or whatever the fuck it may be. Yeah, or, then, yeah. Yeah. Or any reason. Did they just you, fucking hate you, right? It's like celebrities. I mean, they get fucking, yeah. Did you ever expect, like, when you started making money and, like, becoming profitable and, like, helping people, did you ever expect any level of hate? Or did you not even know that, like, existed? That's the thing. I, 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 I don't have a I – don't, I'm not a hater, dude. Someone fucking makes money. But it's that, there's two ways. Right? If someone becomes successful, I know them. And I have access to them. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing? I want to – oh, dude, show me how you did it. Yeah. 
Show me who, also show me how you did it. Let me be your friend, show me. Versus, fuck you, I'm gonna destroy your life. <laughs> like, what the fuck? How is that gonna help you? How the fuck is that gonna help you? Yeah, so, exactly. I'm a very naive guy, cause you know, like, you know me, man. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a hateful person, man. I try to help people. And yeah. so, I don't wanna stoop to their fucking level and do all this shit. But that was when I realized there's some nasty motherfuckers out there. Yeah. And I, I lived so long in this bubble because I was a nerd growing up. I didn't have any friends and stuff. And the people I hung out were all like nerds, yeah. right? So they were book smart and they, 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 they got their ass whipped at home by their parents. You know? yeah. So they weren't like running around doing all this fucking junky shit. I didn't even drink actually until I was like 19 years old, bro. Really? Yeah. Did you, did <laughs> you just all downhill from there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Dude, I was a, dude, I was actually a, years. dude. I was like a prodigy. I, I think I had almost like a near perfect memory. I was fucking super advanced until I started drinking. The moment I fucking started drinking, nineteen years old, game the fuck over. Game the fuck over. I was like, oh, what the fuck? This is liquid courage. I was, I was a very shy kid. <laughs> dude, so everyone's brains are so smart until they find <laughs> alcohol. Everyone's so smart, and then they just dude, yeah. Like, they so go I went to college. It. I didn't have any fucking friends. I, I was very shy, yeah. and then. I go to these college parties and then I was by myself. I I literally walked in college parties by myself and then I discovered fucking alcohol. I would fucking slam like two Long Island ICs because it was cheap as shit back then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bang for the bus and Long Island ICs were like six shots, bro. <laughs> it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like bang for the buck and, and it gets you fucked up. So I, I that's when it was all down here, bro. I was like fuck this shit. I went from 4.0 to fucking barely passing and shit. Oh my god. <laughs> so, so you've had some like nuts moments. Like like you've had like the hater moments from trading. You've had all that. But like have you ever had like insanely happy moments from trading? Like has trading ever brought you like such insane joy? Yeah. In I mean obviously besides making money or like making relationships. I met a lot of great people. You know I met you guys. I met Alex. You know. Yeah. Um, insanely happy was the moment that for me I, I lived in obscurity all my life as an immigrant all that right I, I was never yeah. really the popular yeah. kid and all of a sudden like I think I, I like the fact that hey man all of a sudden I have a voice I came from this immigrant kid as being an immigrant poor kid uh, who was bullied all the time never was shown respect people looked at me like who the fuck are you right yeah. so now it's like holy fuck I, I have power Right? I can fucking yeah. crush yeah. you. I can crush a stock. I can do, I can say some shit and then, you know, shit like that, right? Yeah. It's like, so yeah. I'll give you an example. Like, let, let's say like a Subway sandwich uh, or, or actually a Domino's pizza or some shit. They fuck me up or something on a pizza. I can tweet it and all of a sudden I get fucking response from Domino's. <laughs> right? And so <laughs> those, are, those, that's when I realized, holy fuck. So I'm now I understand how these sick bastards in politics of Hollywood, they have so much money. Yeah. But what they're seeking is the power. That's why they're doing all sorts of crazy fucked up shit in life, right? The yeah. politicians don't need any more money. But they're, what they're trying to do is, is to obtain power. And that's why you have all these fucking crazy people doing, like, these sex scandals and shit, you know? Like, like, like Harvey Weinstein <laughs> and, and what the fuck, yeah, bro? Yeah. What the fuck, bro? You see what I'm saying? It's like, it's like they have too much. They're getting drunk off power. Yeah. And so, so, so that, that was what it is, man. I, I, so, so the insanely happy with the realization that, holy fuck. But, but, you know, I was very careful not to abuse it as much, you know? And so yeah. that's so why you don't see me pump, the, pumping the shit. The power is yeah. like the highest high, right? That's like the highest high of trading. Like for you, like you felt like this, like, I have a voice. Like I can like, I can control things. Like I can do something like, Correct. I can do something. Correct. Correct. Right. Man, I would used to bring my friends over and said, watch me move this fucking stock myself. <laughs> it's fucking savage. It's fucking savage. <laughs> I, I, would be, I was like, dude, because like back then, so I'll give you an example, like I could make a stock go down just by fucking putting up a, like 50,000 shares on the offer, right? Yeah, exactly. Manipulated. Like Everyone shit. gets scared. She's hey, not manipulated. That's illegal. I, I really wanted to fill, but it didn't fill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, again, it's all fictional anyway. This is all fictional. Nothing is fucking real. So it's just fucking funny. <laughs> Try sometimes. I I taught people to do that. I know who's on the other side. When I see certain prices, I know some asshole that I taught in the past. I no <laughs> longer he's doing it because I know I know the style, man. I taught all these motherfuckers how to do that shit, right? And I don't do that so, anymore. 
but they're still doing it. So you, you've had like that. I mean, you are one of the people, like in my opinion, that have had all the ups and downs of trading because you've been around out of anyone I know, like the longest in this, like in this industry, but like, yeah. so you've had the highs of like the power and what you can do, but like, have you ever had like the lows? Like, is there something? Oh, dude, you let me talk about the lows, man. Fuck. Yeah. The world was, I was, I was so good at what I did and I did it legitimately guys. If I, dude, I was on the FBI and the SEC and FINRA's fucking, fucking um, <laughs> favorite call list. I'm not joking. Yeah. Did I tell you all those stories? You guys hear all those stories? Wait, example, is, this is a good fucking example. So when General Motors went bankrupt, this is General Motors, this is a big fucking company, right? It, when it went bankrupt, it, 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 it went to the penny stocks. And I was like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> and so it was trading like eight cents a share, shit like that, right? And this is a stock that used to be worth 50 bucks to 20 bucks, right? And it, they have a Q at the end. So it's GM, GM, Q. Anyways, I was like, fuck, it went to my fucking shit. So I'm trading 10% of the volume of that fucking stock. So when I used to trade penny stocks, I was 10% of the daily volume, bro. Didn't mean I buy the 10% at <laughs> once. I would be like scalping back, back and forth all day fucking long, right? And I'm competing with the algos, which is the market makers, right? They have an algo. But, so basically, I've, I'm taking a shit. I'm not joking. This is a true fucking story. I'm taking a shit after the market closed. I get a fucking phone call. I'm sitting on the toilet. Hello? This is so-and-so from the SEC. I'm like, what the fuck, right? Can, uh, can you shit tell right me... There, it all came out. <laughs> Can you tell me why you're trading this stock? What stock? General Motors? Because I want to make money? Why'd you buy so much of it? Why'd you trade so much of it? I want to make money. <laughs> and she goes, are you the guy pumping it? Do you know it's bankrupt? And I'm like, yeah, that's why, I'm buck that's why it's eight cents, bitch. <laughs> so they're basically trying to say that I was the ringleader to, to run this manipulative yeah. trading thing. Yeah. Dude, these stocks like went up five times. They went from eight cents to like forty cents, bro. Yeah. Yeah. This is how crazy the chain stocks were, right? That, and it's still going on now with the Robinhood shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, and now I'm just laughing. I'm going. I'm gonna tell you something. Do you know what GM is? It's a fucking billion dollar company. I'm. I am a fucking kid sitting in the home on the toilet right now, and you're calling me. I'm. Gonna, I, I'm, t I'm gonna take that as a compliment that you think I'm the guy who's running the fucking the billion dollar scam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I would get this call, not joking with you, at least once or twice a month. That's insane. One guy from, one chick from the SEC was saying the same thing about another stock. And she, she goes this, she goes, hey, off the record, how the fuck do you do it? We see all your <laughs> trades and shit. We can't figure out how the fuck you do it. How the fuck you do it? They have me on watch. They, they see every fucking shit, right? Because yeah. obviously not, because I'm 10% of every fucking shit. And I, that's because everything I trade, eventually there's a lawsuit on it because of the scam. Eventually yeah. somebody goes to jail for it. And then they're like, this motherfucker is named on every single stock that we fucking litigate. <laughs> <laughs> and so the law was the fact that they subpoenaed me. I went to court. Jesus, man. I, I, I fucking... I had to plead the, I paid lawyers that didn't know what the fuck they're doing. I'll tell you something about the lawyers, okay? So each lawyer I hired was a guy on TV. You see him on CNBC on TV. Yeah, yeah. And they were, that's because they're ex-SEC litigators, right? They yeah. work for the SEC, but they told me this. They go, SEC's a joke. No one knows what the fuck they're doing over there. The only reason they're in there is to pad their resume to go so that they can go private to defend people like me. Yeah. <laughs> I would pay them 10,000 bucks. This is like 15 years, 10 years, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Yeah. to fly in for one day to read the fifth. Then I had another case recently, too. It dug shit up from five years ago. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't fucking remember. Why'd you buy it? What the fuck? <laughs> it goes, did you run it? If I ran it, why would I sell so early and leave a million dollars on the table? <laughs> and so I paid them 25 Gs, and these guys didn't know what the fuck they're doing. They, so $25,000 retainer. For me to tell them, to plead the fifth. Because they go, pal, uh, I think you're guilty. I go, why? Because you knew it was a scam and you shorted it. No, fuck you talking about. You participated in a scam knowing it's a scam. I'm like, first of all, motherfucker, I didn't know it was a fucking scam until you called me right now. <laughs> it's not my job <laughs> yeah. to, to, to fucking say that this is a scam. It's your fucking job. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, so, exactly. That was when I was like, I give up on 
these pain stock shit is not fucking worth it because yeah. what they're trying to do is this, guys. I'm telling you right now, man. I'm, they will never arrest the big guys in Wall Street because they're, they won't get a job. They will come and attack me yeah. to get the clout to say, we clean up Wall Street. So Bernie Madoff came, right? After the Bernie Madoff and after the, the Enron shit, they yeah. blamed it on the little guy. So that's why they came with a pattern day trader rule, all this shit. Uh, so, and then after the Wolf of Wall Street movie came out, that was when they shut down every OTC. They changed all the fucking shit for the OTC because the Wolf of Penny, you know what I'm saying? And so they, we cleaned up. You see that? Wolf of Penny stock, I cleaned up all the Penny shit. But Murdy Madoff didn't touch Penny stock. Right? Bernie Madoff was a fucking, Bernie, yeah. if you look at Bernie Madoff, Bernie Madoff was the CEO of NASDAQ, bro. Yeah. He's the chairman of NASDAQ. Yeah, I know. He ran a Ponzi scheme for 20 fucking years. That's and insane. it was under their fucking nose. Yeah. And you what they do? They call me to try to get me. I, mean, I didn't tell you that shit. Were you ever scared that you were going to go to jail? Like, were you Dude, ever? I'm fu- yeah, I was scared. It's fucked. I'm scared. Yeah, it's fu- fucked. It's fucked. They, they try to squeeze every motherfucker. They, they, Did you almost quit trading from it? Like, were you almost like, fuck, I'm done trading. I'm going to figure something else out. I, it- I quit OTC because of that. Yeah. Oh, also, I wanted to mention something. I have two questions. One question is, okay, when they banned you off of the night route, like, what was that like? And also, when you made the switch from, like, uh, OTC to NASDAQ, like, how different was it? Like, how crazy was it? And how... Hard was that kind of adjustment? So I, I explained all uh, the, the route thing in the mobile trading book without, and also chat with traders, but I'll explain to you again because it's an awesome fucking story. Uh, it's fictional once again. <laughs> so, I know I've heard I, it. I just forgot, and I just wanted yeah, to bring it up again. This is fucking, I'll, I'll tell you how genius the fucking trader was. I was trading so much size of that fanny base stock, right? So, so night started way before. So what happened is night controls, like, I would say 80% of the penny stock market back then. And what I did was, <laughs> man, I would always front run night. Okay? It's like, uh, what, man, you beat. And so night was like, what the fuck are you doing? You're acting like a market maker. And they go, that's illegal. You can't be on both. You, you see what they do? They, they make up these rules. Yep. And then so, so night, because I was killing night at every fucking chance I get. Cause, but the problem is that, that's the only route. Uh, Arca was not available back then for, for penny stocks. Right, Knight was the market maker, so I would take all their order flow. I would just set the bid and the offer, yeah. and I knew the direction they're going. I'm, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm still all their order flow basically. And Knight, Knight basically wanted to kick me out, and I couldn't do anything because they said they were a private company. Um, so they just basically what they did was they called my broker and said, "Ban Bell, or we're gonna shut the whole firm down." So some of my brokers, they were so nice because I made them so much fucking money, bro. Like literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in commissions, and. And not only that, I was their biggest order flow to get down the rates for night. So it's ironic, right? I helped them get cheaper rates for night route for them, right? And then they wanted me to turn off. So they would create a special dummy account for me. They didn't play all these. It was a cat and mouse game. Yeah. But they, but they came to the point where they, they knew my order flow. They, they followed me around. They had an eye. They, they just knew it, right? And they go, you're fucking done. So I would. So the hardest thing for me back then was trying to find a broker that would let me trade the way I wanted to trade. Uh, and so I bounced around from a bunch of brokers. And so, and so it came to a fruition. Citadel banned me too, by the way. <laughs> that motherfucker, Citadel. <laughs> that shit. So I was like, all right, man, if I'm going to go out, I want to fuck you up. <laughs> so Fannie Mae, man, this is genius, oh, right? So, so I'll tell you this is fucking genius shit. So I was trading with four accounts. Mm-hmm. Because different broker, different accounts, different, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so... It's like, so you, I, cause that way no one knows who the fuck is who, right? And so I would be, I had four order rally up. And so, so that day that, so people would think like, oh, I was all in. No, dude, it was building up. I was making a massive amount of money up until then already, right? But it was just a perfect opportunity where I was long, I think like 20,000 shares of FMA when it was like at four bucks or something overnight. Mm-hmm. 8,000 shares was, you know, 8,000 share position. So, I was kind of sweaty, but I was making like 50 grand on it before, the day before, 100 grand, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I, so, so when, when the, the market opened, I was like, oh, fuck, it gapped. So, actually, it didn't gap up. I was, it gapped down, bro. I was like down 10 Gs. 
or some shit like that, right? I, added, I was down like, it was down 10, uh, 50 cents or some shit. I was down like eight to four to 10 Gs. I forgot. I was like, fuck. So the thing that people didn't realize that day, I, I just found the, the, the chat logs with my friend that made a million dollars that day too, training with me. That was the guy I, did, uh, I don't want to talk with him, but um, I went, found the chat logs. I was actually down, I think, four to, four to 10 grand before I, I made that 1.4 million. I was actually red, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I don't know how the fuck I did it. And so I fucking, I took the loss. I took the fucking loss. I was so pissed. But then when I went back on, I shoved inside and I kept on adding. I did what Warrior Trading did nowadays. What they does is, he, but I don't have sheep. Right? So what I do is like, I had four accounts. I had four massive accounts. <laughs> and so I would fucking buy with every fucking account to stagger out the prices, right? Yeah. And I knew that night was a dick. That night would never fill me. So I used that to his fucking disadvantage. I had fucking million dollars of buyout, buy orders out. They, they won't fill me. Legitimately open market orders yep. with limits. So I put a limit here. They don't fill me. They go up. I go up. They go up. They go up. You see what I'm saying? Next thing you know, I had a fucking chain of million dollars of fucking buy orders. That they won't fucking fill me. Holy fuck. But I was already in like... 200,000 shares, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to add more. So I was in 200,000 shares of a $5 stock or whatever the fuck it made was at the time. I forgot, forgot, right? We can pull the chart later. Um, um, actually, pull up the chart now, dude. Let's walk through this. This is pretty cool here. Right. Yeah, uh, pull, pull it up. up. Uh, pull up. Um, so let me, let me text you. This is cool, man. I don't think, we, I don't think I've ever narrated.